so far we have seen two historical examples where we broke them with uh, brute force attacks due to the fact that their uh, key space were small. So a good question is, can we have a still a historical cipher which can be performed on pen and paper and still easy to use, but uh, has a very large key space? The answer is yes. And the uh, cipher that we call in this case is simple monoalphabetic substitution. So encryption algorithm is simple. You replace every letter by a letter. So idea is as follows. Just write the alphabet down. In this case, again, we are using English alphabet. But uh, rewrite the alphabet again, but this time in an order that you prefer. So you, it can be random, or uh, it is better if it is random. So you write the same alphabet, but in a different order. You so, so you permit the uh, letters. And this will be your secret key. So it is very simple. So anybody who wants you to communicate actually generates such a key and give this key you in person. So maybe you go to another city or another country. Then when you want to communicate, you will use this secret key uh, to perform encryption. So when you write your plain text, you will look at the plain text. Then on another paper, you will rewrite it as a cipher text. But in this case, whenever you see A, you, you will write K instead. So whenever you see B, you will write U instead. So it will be it will be like uh, random letters that will appear like random letters as a cipher text and when the person you want to communicate obtains the cipher text they will also replace every k with a every u with b and so on to obtain back the plain text so this is good because as you can see we can choose the key in a uh, in many different ways. For instance, in the English letters, English alphabet, since there are 26 letters, just below A, I can write 26 different values here. But once I write one of them, there remains 25 here, 24 here, and so on. So if you multiply all of them, this would be 26 factorial. So there are actually this many possible secret keys to be used in the cipher. As you can see, compared to other previous examples where the key space was like 26 or 676, this is a huge number. And even for a computer to perform this many uh, operations would be hard. So it looks like a very easy cipher to use, but it is also resistant to uh, brute force attacks. So question is, if it is that good, why we are not using it today? So this is actually used even in, in the First World War had broken maybe hundreds of years ago. So as you can see, since we cannot break it in with a brute force, we have to perform some cryptanalysis here. We have to find a weakness, and then we have to exploit it to break the cipher. So here, the weakness is the redundancy in the language. So by using this redundancy in the language, the cipher can be broken. And this technique is called frequency analysis. So let's talk about this and uh, how it is done. And as an example, I encrypted the plain text by using this simple monoalphabetic substitution. So I removed the punctuation marks and the empty spaces. So the cipher text you will capture will look something like this. So as you can guess, just by looking at it, there's not much you can do. Uh, you cannot break it by uh, uh, brute force attack. But as you can see, there are some redundancy here. For instance, you can see that the letter T appears next to each other many times and so on. And some letter appear more than the other. Uh, so this is the idea actually behind the frequency analysis. And surprisingly enough, it is very old technique. So. Uh, this technique was introduced by Al Kindi in a in the uh, book titled "A Manuscript Deciphering Cryptographic Messages." It was written in 9th century. A copy of the book is available at Topkapı Palace. Uh, if you go to the museum, you can actually pay some money and take the photocopy of the pages of this book. But it is written in Arabic, of course. So, as far as we know, this is the first crypto cryptanalysis book in the history and it explains how we can use this frequency analysis to break this 
monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Again, as I told you, it is based on the redundancy of the language. Ideas as follows. First, you have to know which language the uh, plain text is written. But if you don't know, you can actually uh, perform this operation for every known language uh, in the world and try one by one. So for a given language, let's say that it is English, find a long, very long text. It should be really long and count the number of frequencies of every letter. So just get a, a novel written in that uh, uh, language and just count uh, how many times a letter appears. So by using a, a computer, this, this is today very easy. You can just uh, write a simple code to count how many times A appears and B appears. And if you divide it to number of every letter in the text, you will get the percentages of the letters that they appear. So this is what we call the frequency. So for an English text, if it is long enough, when you count that, you will see that the letter E appears the most. So this is the redundancy in the English language. And the second place always belongs to T. So if the text is not just a few words, you will observe that this is the case. But this is specific to the English uh, language. So if you perform this attack for a, a Turkish text, you will observe that the letter that appears the most is A, not E. And for different uh, languages, it will be different. But let's go back to the English case. So you just create such a table from E, then T, and so on. You will uh, write 26 letters in the frequencies they appear. Then if the ciphertext you captured is long enough, you also uh, count the uh, number of appearances of every letter in the ciphertext. And uh, the most letter that appears in the ciphertext most probably will correspond to E in the plain text. So you replace it by E. So that is the idea. The second uh, most frequent letter then most probably will be T. So if you start by doing this one by one, you will uh, try to see that the plain text will be get, looking something meaningful. And then for most of the remaining parts, you can guess which letter goes to which. So by repeating this process, it is very easy. Actually, this is the first homework I give to my applied cryptology course students. I give them a cipher text, uh, both in Turkish and English, and ask them to obtain the plain text. And they do repeat these steps, and they obtain the plain text. This is very easy. And actually, this is a very important uh, practice because uh, as you can see there's uh, some uh, statistical property we are uh, exploiting here in this case it is the redundancy in the language which is actually the probabilities probability of the letters they appear the most so modern cryptanalysis techniques is a lot uh, similar to this case we find a statistical weakness in the cipher and try to exploit it to obtain some part of the secret key. So this is why this is very important and I encourage everybody to do this. And also uh, this knowledge sometimes helps you in uh, popular culture too. If you are uh, playing video games, most of the time, most of the puzzles they ask can be solved by frequency analysis. Of course, most of the time the question uh, becomes easier. For instance, I took a secret shot from a video game called Broken Sword. Here, as it says that uh, you capture the node, and it says that the node has been written using a substitution cipher. This means that a different symbol has been used to represent each letter of the alphabet. So these symbols are should. Uh, so these symbols actually are some of the letters. So you try. You need to find which one goes to which. Again, you can easily perform the frequency analysis, and uh, the most appeared uh, symbol here will be E, and so on. Of course, they didn't remove the. Uh, blanks here to or the punctuation marks to help you so you can guess easily which letter goes to which one so again uh, you, you can use frequency analysis in uh, even today it helps you when solving puzzles and so on but again the idea he, that we use here is somewhat repeated in the modern cryptanalysis techniques where we try to find the statistical weakness in the cipher then exploit it. So this will be all for the uh, pen and paper methods. Next, we will be talking about 
uh, cipher machines like Enigma.